Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Soulful Abundance with Chris Williams. I am super excited to share another amazing guest to help you create a life and a business that actually allows you to light up, feel good, serve others, and also kind of hear how you get to balance both of an amazing, thriving, profitable business and a life that you actually love. So today I have one of my friends, Eileen March here for my luminous life, and I'm super excited to have her here, share her wisdom and uh, her brilliance here with us. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, Eileen. Sorry. Thank you. That's okay. No, no worries. I'm so delighted to be here, Chris. Thanks so much for having me on. Yay. So I know that you've got some, uh, you know, most of the people here in our world are holistic practitioners and you've got multiple modalities in which you've kind of lived, uh, you know, from being a midwife to now you've got the Woo podcast, which I love. It's so fun. Tell us a little bit about what it is that you do and you, what lights you up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd love to. So yeah, as you mentioned, I was a midwife. I was a midwife for six years. I guess I was immersed in that world for 10 years because it's a mm -hmm. four-year degree program here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And while I loved the work mm -hmm. and I really loved empowering women to listen to their bodies, to trust their bodies throughout mm -hmm. that pregnancy, birthing, postpartum process, it was not a sustainable place for me to stay. And I really hit a wall of burnout mm. in uh, 2021. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> there might be other factors influencing that there, but um, I wanted to carry on helping people, mm -hmm. helping women, especially mm -hmm. to live lives that light them up, mm -hmm. that they, they feel empowered in that they can feel like they can trust themselves, their bodies, their intuition. And so I would like to say that coaching and energy healing found, uh, I found them, but they really found me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so I, I embarked on a journey into getting a life coaching certification. And at the same time, I dropped into a year long, it's called wild medicine, energy healing mm -hmm. program. And it's, beyond just kind of the energy work where I work with chakras and, mm -hmm. and balancing energies, it's more holistic and in depth. So looking at the seasons in our lives, in our bodies, in the broader world, mm -hmm. and whole female health, really, which was an, an easy transition for me from that yeah. Midwifery world. Yeah, you already had all that beautiful knowledge about, you know, our women's bodies and women's health. And so it sounds like that was a beautiful combination and beautiful weaving uh, per se mm -hmm. of, you know, taking what it is that you're already doing and weaving that into a new way so that you could help, help more women in just a different way. Yeah. Yeah. It felt like a very easeful transition. Yeah. Isn't that when we know it's right though, right? When mm -hmm. we're not trying to force it or like, you know, it just is like, oh, this is just like a next kind of turn here. And it feels like a really easy, you know, experience to just kind of change into yeah yeah definitely yeah. it felt it feels natural every time I sit down with a client or um, have the mm -hmm. privilege of walking with them through big life shifts or, mm -hmm. or changes mm -hmm. it brings me back to being in the birthing room and, and being present for those powerful life-altering moments and mm -hmm. holding that space is really my life's passion yeah, it is. Isn't it amazing when we get to hold that space for our clients and just see them soar and grow and evolve into, you know, just a new, a new evolution of who it is that they already are, but they just get to step even more fully into, into that experience for sure. So tell me more about the life coaching part. Like I know you include some of the seasons in your work um, for both women that currently have their cycle and those that don't have their cycle so that they're able to really be fully sourced. And I think that this is so powerful. Um, you know, I know that you were experiencing burnout at one time. I've absolutely experienced burnout before. And what we know is that we can't really create the impact in the world that we're here to create if we're burnt out. So how did you first two questions, actually, how did you kind of remedy that for you? And then what are some of the ways that you actually help women do that for themselves? Yeah, great question. I found that one of the most potent teachers in my learning as I stepped into this career, into this new life path was 
quite literally the seasons of the earth Mm. and learning about the ebbs and flows of the energy in the broader natural world and then also the ebbs and flows of our energy as women if we are in cycling menstruating bodies and if not using the ebbs and flows of the lunar energy is a really Mm. beautiful way to mirror that that energy but it's just this knowing that we can't be in perpetual harvest yeah and our our culture in North America especially really puts us into a place where we're forced into being in perpetual spring, summer, spring, summer, plant harvest, plant harvest, yes, plant harvest. Yes, yes. And we forget about the magic and the deep importance of autumn and winter, which <laughs> is reassess, let go of what is no longer serving, and then the deep rest and composting time of winter so that the things that we have let fall to the ground mm-hmm. might turn into fertile soil for those seeds. Mm. And so it's been really this permission for myself to rest and to have ebbs and flows and then passing that to my clients as well. Oh my gosh, absolutely. You know, one of the things that I've shared with my clients and that, you know, uh, that I also have incorporated into my own life is rest is a revenue generating activity and Mm -hmm. that we really do have to, you know, we can't be in perpetual harvest all the time. Just like you said, it's kind of like, I love to hike. So I love to use the analogy of a mountain, right? We're not hiking up the mountain the whole time, even though we want to get to the summit, there's times where we actually have to go down, right? To go around, to have a break, to rest before we then start the ascension again. And I'm so glad that you're talking and and relating that back to the seasons, because I think there's so much wisdom in our natural world, right? There, There is a reason why our natural world has four seasons. So why wouldn't it be a natural thing for humans who live on the earth to also work with that instead of against it? I would, gosh, I'd love for you to kind of speak a little bit about that if you would. Yeah, of course, for sure. I love that you mentioned for humans that live on the earth to work with it. For me, it's also that remembering that we are not just on the earth, we are of the earth. Mm. There is this real split and it happened Mm -hmm. in Western philosophy centuries ago where it was humans and everything else. Yes. And it's, it's a false dichotomy. We are of nature. We are very much a part of this natural world. And that remembering peace can be so potent in giving ourselves the grace and the softness to ebb and flow to move with the seasons. And Mm -hmm. one of the practices that I bring to my, both my one-on-one clients, but it's also open to anybody who wants to join is dropping into ceremony to celebrate the shifts of the seasons Mm -hmm. through something called the wheel of the year, Mm -hmm. which is a pagan calendar. It's, it originates the one that I follow as a Celtic calendar. Mm -hmm. And so there are eight celebrations, the equinoxes, the solstices, and then the midway points in between that mark that turning of the wheel, the shifting of the seasons, different energies. And so we come Mm -hmm. together in like women's circle ceremony Mm -hmm to mark those shifts and set intention and reflect and move with the seasons. And for me, the personal practice of that was probably the biggest catalyst for Mm. my feeling like I was finally falling into alignment in my own life. Mm. And they're a really beautiful space to kind of help my clients live and embody the experience of of moving more cyclically rather than at the frenetic, yeah, um, you know, rush, <laughs> rush, rush, yeah, rush, go, 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 do, do, yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. yes, absolutely. It's such a, in, a cultural entrainment that you have to do more, right? Do more, do more, do more. You finish something, go to the next level, finish something, go to the next. It's always striving, it's always hustling. There's so yeah. much um, stress, literally, stress put on that to to be in go mode all the time. Yeah. So our I'm, worth, oh, sorry. Yes. I yeah, no, you're our absolutely right. Wrapped up in it, right? Yes. And so that's yes. a lot of the work is like decoupling from these, you deserve rest simply because you are, right? You don't have to earn mm-hmm. your rest. Yeah. It is your birthright. Yeah. There is this like yes. sense of it's okay to put yourself first. It's okay to tend to yourself as well. Mm-hmm. And all of those pieces, that's where the coaching side of what I do mm-hmm. really comes in is that belief work. Yeah. I think it's so important that, you know, women are actually 
And I don't, I don't mean this by that we have to give women permission to rest. I don't mean it from that, but for some reason we do need to hear that. Yes, absolutely. You get to, right. Like you get to rest, you know, nobody needs permission to do that. But I think as women, because there is this cultural entrainment, it feels good to hear that from another successful woman that, yeah, no, I get it. And guess what? This is actually the way rest is the way incorporating this so that it's a part of the way that we live. It's a part of the way that we build our business so that we are not, you know, constantly chasing the next shiny yeah. thing. Yeah. We don't need permission, but permission sure helps. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, like, no, it's okay. Yeah. Like I do it. You can do it too. And you're like, Oh, okay, cool. Yay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you do that? I'm curious, um, you know, for myself with my, with my business mind too, is, you know, how do you keep a successful business running and honor fall and winter, right? So that you're still planting the seeds at certain times, right? Like, it's not like we take off of our business half of the year, right? For fall and winter. Yeah. So how do you incorporate that so that you still have the time to let go of what it is that you, you know, don't need and let the, the winter time happen in your, in your business? Yeah, I am still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, aren't yeah. we all? Um, <laughs> but I, I think the biggest shift for me has just been recognizing that when I'm feeling depleted, mm -hmm. pushing to get things done is not going to result in results. It's yeah. not going to help. And so, you know, scheduling in downtime, Mm -hmm. making sure that I prioritize one-on-one -on -one time with my partner, with yeah. my friends, where my phone isn't with me, yeah. remembering that if I don't check Instagram 18 times a day, it's going to be know, okay, right? <laughs> right? Like <laughs> twice a day would be fine. People don't need an answer right exactly. away. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Um, I just had this conversation with, with my clients the other day. I'm like, it's really okay to just check in the morning and the afternoon or the morning and the evening. Like you, people do not need a response right when they right when they come. Yeah. yeah. So little things like that have been a big piece of it. And then again, coming back to this, this ceremony, I often joke that these, these ceremonies are more for me, almost like I mm -hmm. hold them for me. They're for my clients and for yeah. people who want to join. But even if nobody came, I would be dropping into them because mm -hmm. it's that real deep reminder. Okay. Take the time. Take mm -hmm. the time to reset, take the time to revisit, to release, mm -hmm. to call in. Um, and so moving really intentionally with the seasons mm -hmm. um, helps. And and with business too, we think about seasons in our business. Mm -hmm. They your your business seasons may not match the outer right. seasons. And that's yeah. okay too. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay Thank too. you for saying that. Yeah. It's not like during the winter we're like not doing anything in our business and during yeah. the fall we're just like pruning everything. Like I think that is something that happens you know, throughout, but it's important mm -hmm. to have time for all of those. Yeah. And setting yourself up ahead of time. I, I run a freebie every, uh, December called rest miss, which is 21 days of rest. And Ooh, so there's a it. lot of work on the back end to get that set up and running work that yeah. I might not be motivated to be doing in those dark days leading up to Yule to the winter solstice. Yeah. So I just make sure that I've prepared ahead of time. I give myself lots of spaciousness and ease and yeah. the beauty of having systems in place. Is yes. That oh my God. You're my language. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. For sure. I know one of the things that's worked really well for me in my business was um, taking, a, you know, making sure every month that I had intentional doubt downtime. So, mm -hmm. you know, creating a business model that actually worked for me in my life. So, you know, I'm forward facing in my business with my clients the first three weeks of the month. And then the last week of the month for me, which would be my winter, would be the time mm -hmm. where I do, I'm not forward facing at all. And I get to go away on retreat or I get to just think or be the visionary and journal and dream or, and I think especially as solo entrepreneurs, we need to remember the value of having that quiet time. Of, yeah, that is really where the magic happens and the magic drops in instead of having to be on for somebody else. We actually just get to kind of be and dream and think and open to our intuitive and the divine and, and, and get those amazing downloads that are available for us. Yeah, they're absolutely, that, that downtime is absolutely imperative because otherwise 
yeah, there's no space for it. Yeah, <laughs> There's no space to hear your intuition and connect with it. It's something that I work with my clients a lot on is remembering yeah. how to connect with your intuition, how to trust it. That's a big piece as well. And yeah. then how to act from it. Yeah. But if you don't take the time to slow down, you can never even get to that hearing it. Yeah. So true. Because the world's so loud. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So what would be some, um, you know, advice or tips that you have for women who are learning to trust their intuition again? You know, again, they're still caught up in the do, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. You know, worthiness is based on what it is that we accomplish, not just who we are. You know, it's easy for us to say, no, you're born worthy. But with all of the messaging that we get, it's it's really hard to kind of own that piece that no, it doesn't matter. I, I am worthy just how I am. And, and, you know, I get to trust my intuitive sense. How, do you have any advice around that? I do. Yeah. I think that especially if it's a fairly new practice to be mm-hmm. trying to listen to and trust intuition, yeah. starting really small stakes is important. So I'll often say to my clients, you know, in the morning, if you are a hot beverage drinker in the morning, check in with yourself. Do you want coffee or tea? Uh, And then let yourself be right. Yeah. You know, if, if your body's like, Oh, I want tea. I usually drink coffee, but it feels like tea. try it, see what happens. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. maybe it feels really good. And maybe you're like, Oh, actually, no, I didn't want tea today. That's okay. It's like, it's Mm -hmm. these little decisions or, you Mm -hmm. know, we were actually chatting on Mm -hmm. my podcast earlier in the week about the decision to turn left and check out this neighborhood because there was a Celtic word in the name. Uh And the downside to that was minimal. Like if if there'd been nothing there, the cost to you was a few minutes of your time. And so exactly practicing those little moments mm-hmm. of trusting so that when it starts to get to the bigger decisions where you're feeling an intuitive nudge, you have some proof to back mm. up why your intuition is to be trusted. Oh, I love that because I think so often we're looking for like this big neon sign of this is your intuition. <laughs> right? And we're like, wait, no. actually it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's, it's often... That. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Often if there's a neon sign, that's going to be fear or societal uh, expectations that are like mm. coming through more mm. of your rational or critical mind. Intuition is really quiet and it's really easy to ignore. Yeah. It's because we have, again, been trained to really prize our rational, critical, analytical mm-hmm. thinking. Yeah. It's super easy to feel or hear that intuitive nudge and then go, oh, but that doesn't make sense for X, Y, Z reasons. And so often when I'm speaking to people early on, they'll be like, oh, how do I differentiate between fear and intuition? Yeah, Intuition is usually a gentle tug towards something. Mm. Whereas fear is often like a recoil away. Mm. Occasionally intuition will be like, don't go over there. That's dangerous. But but the kind of sense will be more like you should go this way rather uh, ooh, than don't that. go that way. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, that's such a good discernment. I really, really love that. Um, because sometimes our ego throws up the resistance, right? And that mm-hmm. turns on that neon sign that says, no, 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 no. Where intuition is like, let's go this way. I love yeah. that. Oh, and yeah. that's so much better in your body too. When you think about it. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. There's, there is that, like, there can be some nervousness or Mm -hmm. fear, even when you start to practice following it, but it's very different than that, like, alarm bells, danger alert kind of fear that sends our brain into that fight flight Mm -hmm. freeze mode. Amazing. That is so cool. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I really love that. Um, What else would you like to share with us today, Aileen? Is there anything specific that you want to kind of share around creating this balance so that we can honor the seasons and still enjoy what it is that we're doing and building? Yeah, sure. I I think that with anything that we're building or doing in life, it can be really easy to put ourselves off for later and we've already spoken Mm -hmm. to this a little bit but I Mm -hmm. think that's a big important piece of the work that I'm doing is helping women reconnect with their bodies with their earth the earth Mm -hmm. and remember that putting ourselves first now it benefits everybody it benefits our business it benefits our family it benefits if we have children it benefits Mm -hmm. them it's that 
not just the idea of pouring from a full cup or filling your wells so that it yeah. overflows and waters everybody around you, but also that example setting. Yeah. I think, you know, we have to truly be the change that we mm-hmm. wish to see in the world. Mm-hmm. And, and the least selfish thing you can do is tend to yourself mm-hmm. so that you can mm-hmm. tend to your business, to your yeah. family, so that yeah. you can ripple out the the positive impact of the work. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of women get stuck too yeah. in, in, in deciding to invest in that, mm-hmm. in themselves, in mm-hmm. their own mm-hmm. personal growth and support. Again, we've been told that we should take care of others first. And so it feels really sticky for a lot of women to make mm-hmm. the investment. Yeah. But it's so worth it. Speaking from experience. Yeah. It's so yeah. worth it. Same. Absolutely. And it's, I was just going to ask, like, you totally read my mind. We've just been like on these great, like connections um, where, you know, where do you see women getting stuck? Where do you see, you know, the stuck places where they're bumping up against, you know, it might be something that they're doing that they're not aware of. It might be a cultural entrainment that they're thinking that's not true. Or, you know, what is it that you see that's a commonality of, of where we get stuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely that that one piece that investing mm-hmm. in ourselves. I I personally find it much easier to justify an investment in my business. Yes, like a right. Copywriting course mm-hmm. or something like that. It's gonna help then, me make money. It's gonna right? help me make, build my business. So there's a return yeah. in there. Yeah, exactly. Whereas something like say a, a breath work facilitator, it the connection isn't as automatically available, and so it feels mm-hmm. indulgent mm-hmm. Uh, and. I think we should be indulging ourselves more and that that word is not a bad word. I talk a lot about pleasure as well and, and being able to receive and seek out and really um, cultivate pleasure in our lives again, as Mm -hmm. not a dirty word. Mm -hmm. It's uh, (laughs) the, the Christian co-opting of some of these Mm -hmm. human experiences and turning them into sins has also really permeated culture yeah um and and I think we get caught up in a lot of that so where a lot of our good girl conditioning comes from yeah yeah exactly for sure yeah that conditioning and and the confusion in that as well right Mm -hmm. where it's um you know there's a there's a difference between what the dogma is versus what a a spiritual connection or principle is with it. Right. Yes. Not putting down any Christian or religion or whatever, you know, our, our listeners choose to follow. It's just that I think sometimes there's a misunderstanding about the benefit of joy and rest and pleasure. And, you Mm. know, how that, you know, it is a natural human component that is actually beneficial. It's actually good. It's not. Yeah evil it's not you know going to turn you into you know a um you know a a bad person right like you know i i know for me just because i help women make more money that there's a big uh resistance there that you know we should be giving Mm -hmm. you know because we're natural nurturers or givers and it is hard for us to receive money for our services right yeah so there's this fear that if i start reserving you know taking money for my services I'm not spiritual anymore, or I'm not, you know, a a giver anymore, or it's like this either or instead of the both and. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I agree fully Mm -hmm. there. It it is that there's so much beauty in our spiritual traditions. And there are a lot of centuries of of old white dudes deciding they want to control people better. Exactly. And adding their own spin to things. Yeah, then that's humanity. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Totally. That's humanity. Yes. We're human. There are mistakes that have been made through the years as we can yeah for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the um tips that you find with your um clients that work really, really well for helping them create space? Yeah. So It really, when I work with clients, it's very tailored. I I work one-on-one primarily. And so it's Mm -hmm. tailored to their specific situation. Mm -hmm. But an example springs to mind of one client I have who is, um, she's a farm wife. She has two really busy boys. She's also got her own business on the side. Mm -hmm. And life is full. And so creating space is really tricky. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's been really powerful for her is that reminder that 
first she is worthy of asking for a support and time yeah. and space and creating yeah. it in the mornings for her. But the other really potent shift has happened in finding the joy and the presence and the stillness in the little moments throughout the day. So, yes. you know, the chore of washing dishes, but can we appreciate the smell of the dish soap mm -hmm. and the way the water feels on our hands or maybe mm -hmm. the view at our window? Mm -hmm. It's creating those kind of micro moments of rest throughout mm -hmm. our daily life and a, an awareness of the beauty and the magic that exists that really changes the whole cadence of our day and the way that we feel as we move through it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for saying that. Cause I definitely related to that at one point, you know, many years ago, it was like, oh, well, rest doesn't really count unless it doesn't mm -hmm. really count as rest unless I'm going to get a massage or I'm going to, you know, go away on vacation. Right. And what I've learned since then, and I think this is what you're talking about is there really are these micro moments of rest, mm -hmm. right? Whether in between clients or sessions, I'm going outside on my deck to enjoy the flowers and the trees. And, and, you know, even if it's for, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, that is a moment of rest, you know, mm -hmm. getting outside and just even walking, you know, down the street and back for 10 minutes. That's a moment of rest mm -hmm. um, that that I think sometimes we at least many of us that are, you know, in the achieving place kind of discount as, oh, well, those don't really count. That's yeah. not great, right even three mindful breaths, like less than a minute, mm -hmm. that is a moment of rest, especially mm -hmm. for those who are in a busy season of life, who maybe have young kids and a family and a business. And mm -hmm. sometimes we don't have 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And we True. can still take rest in the moments. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. What are some other ways that we can create rest in under like 10 minutes? I love the three breaths. Um, mm -hmm. Any tips that you've got that, that you can share? Yeah, I think bringing attention to any of your senses and and focusing. So whether that be noticing, I keep looking over here because my altar's mm -hmm. over here and yeah. I have dried <laughs> flowers all over it. Yeah. And so noticing a flower or the way the light hits a leaf outside your window or maybe noticing the smell of a candle, yeah. um, bringing things like scents into your workspace uh, is a really powerful way to create an atmosphere of calm and bring some rest even into your active working mm -hmm. um grounding outside for 30 seconds bare feet in the grass that's how I start every morning and it mm -hmm. sets me up to yeah be in connection with my body and the earth for the rest of the day I think yeah. it's a really powerful practice getting getting those few moments in the sunshine mm -hmm. again even if it's 30 seconds yep. just shifting and pausing in whatever it is that you're doing and focusing on yeah. um, and finding rest in stillness. And, and another thing I think too, again, we're so plugged in, we're so busy, you know, we all want to be listening to all the podcasts and the audiobooks mm -hmm. and learning and reading all the time, but sometimes just letting yourself do things like fold the laundry without mm -hmm. outside distraction yeah. or, or cook yeah. dinner in silence and yeah. just let yourself be with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great reminder. I know when I um, started grounding, you know, I would just go outside and sit and, you know, and then my husband would come out and join me and he's like, oh, I'm going to come. And I'm like, take your socks off. And, mm -hmm. and so now he's like, you know, huh, I'm, I'm going to go outside and ground. I'm like, amazing. Right. So, you know, I, I love that we are in, I think what you're talking about here and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's being intentional Mm -hmm. just to be noticed that this is a time where I can breathe or being intentional about, I am now doing the dishes or I'm folding the laundry instead of being reactionary to all the different things that we have to do, you know, and the fires and the circumstances that pop up that we run from one thing to the next, to the next, even if we do have to run to one thing, we can still take that moment to mm -hmm. pause and to be intentional about feeling our breath or coming to our senses or smelling the candle or, you know what, I'm just going to run outside and put my feet on the earth for a moment. And it's, it sounds like it's an intentional decision practice to actually just notice that more. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Certainly mm -hmm. that is. And, and it's not easy. Like if you're out, yeah. of, if you're not in practice of doing it, yeah, rem having reminders around your house, whether it be sticky notes, whether it be, you know, it's the support of a, a partner maybe who is good at it or can help you 
work together, um, knowing that when you make the decision to start noticing, mm-hmm. you're not going to just like snap your fingers and suddenly be present through your mm-hmm. whole day. It takes yeah. a lot of practice and, and yeah. awareness. Yeah. Yeah. So how have things shifted for you, Eileen? I'd love to hear kind of, you know, where, what was it like before you started implementing these practices and where is it for you now? And what are some of the things that you've noticed in your life and your business? Mm-hmm. I would say the biggest thing that I've noticed is that I have so much more compassion and grace for myself, mm. which really ripples out into all of my interactions. Um, it gives me the ability to, despite this being a very busy season of life, but growing a fairly young business still, mm-hmm. to feel less stressed than I was prior Mm -hmm. as a midwife, even when I'm sometimes working more hours now Mm -hmm. than I did then, Mm -hmm. it gives me this deep appreciation and love for my little patch of grass and and what I have in the world. I don't have tons and Mm -hmm. the appreciation I hold, the gratitude I hold for what is present really makes me feel rich. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's priceless really yeah oh absolutely oh my gosh yes I think again back to the hustle right there has to be more 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 and so you're never satisfied but Mm -hmm. when you know that shift of I have an amazing life right now like Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we don't have goals but we get to acknowledge and all the joy and the appreciation for what it is that we have right now, the richness in our life that we have now, whether it's in the form of relationships or experiences or, you know, the, the simple things of, you know, I love my deck. I love going outside mm-hmm. and being under the trees on my deck. And, you know, I get to do that right now, anytime I want, like that's appreciation for what I have now. Yeah. Yeah. It is when our brains go into that, like, grasping for the future or looking, mm-hmm. waiting, waiting, right? We're often like, oh, I'll rest when, or I will be happy mm-hmm. when, or are we constantly mm-hmm. moving that goal post forward? And so that's the, that's the magic of these practices mm-hmm. is that it, it creates, it creates abundance in what we have in this moment yeah. without changing anything really. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that is so beautiful. Yes. And it, we know with energetic resonance, right? If we pluck the G string Mm -hmm. on one guitar, the the guitar next to it, even if it's not touching, will vibrate. So when we're appreciative and and grateful and feeling rich and abundant right now with what it is that we have, it draws more of those experiences. It draws more of what we focus on. It draws Mm -hmm. more abundance and richness and joy in our life even more. Mm -hmm. It calls it in. It's it's beautiful. It's just multiplies the abundance. <laughs> I know, right? It's so awesome. It's so awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, you've got some really great freebies for our, our listeners. And I would love if you could kind of, you know, explain or share what um what we're going to pop here in the in the links for you guys. So be sure to click the description. We're definitely going to give you Eileen's uh, website. And then she's got some beautiful freebies so that you can learn a little bit more about implementing more rest and uh, following the seasons and I'll let you, I'll let you explain what we've got. Yeah, sure. So I have two freebies that I'm going to offer up here for your listeners and watchers. I guess it's on YouTube as well. I know. Um, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So one of them is uh, a recorded affirmation or guided visualization track for worthiness and abundance. Mm. So kind of the two things that we've spoken to this entire episode Um, And so the link will be there for that. And then the other one is, so we didn't really touch on this, but I do call myself a witch. Mm. And what I mean when I say that word is really, my mom was like, can you use a different word? (laughs) I was like, no. (laughs) You're triggering her. (laughs) Yeah. But it prompted me, it prompted me to say, well, what could I, I could say, wise woman, wisdom seeker, earth mama, I could say space holder, community tender, I could say all of these things. Mm -hmm. Or I could just say which so Mm -hmm. (laughs) I have a freebie that is a quiz, it's called which which are you. Mm -hmm. And so you take the quiz, you find out I've I've got five witch types on there. There's a lunar witch and a garden witch and a kitchen witch. Um, oh, and you take fun. the quiz and your results tell you what kind of rest your body is craving. Mm. Oh, 
beautiful. I love that. That is so fun. That's delightful. Yeah. And I love how you're making, you know, the distinction, right? This is, you know, there are multiple ways that we can actually, it's not about the label. It's about the energy and the intention with which we bring to, you know, how we're serving others, how we're holding space, how we're building community, how we're, mm -hmm. you know, being who we, it is that we are in the world. And I, I think that's so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, everybody, please go download, um, you know, go to visit Eileen's website, download any of the freebies that speak to you. And uh, again, thanks so much for being here. All right, everybody, we will see you here next time. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Feel free to share this episode with anybody that you think might resonate with it. And we'll see you back here with Soulful Abundance with Chris Williams next time. Bye.